uh, Jörg Dessler of uh, Stuhl. First of all, tell, tell us what your company does. We're going to talk about uh, liquid cooling. Where, where does that tie into what you are doing? Oh, we do everything that has to do with cooling. We are a provider of cooling solutions uh, globally positioned. And uh, lately, we are paying very much attention to liquid cooling so that we can meet the rising demand of uh, higher densities in data centers, but our entire portfolio goes from a single one ton, I speak uh, US uh, measures right now, so a small K KW unit uh, ceiling hung mounted up to a megawatt of cooling in a uh, custom designed uh, uh, chilled water unit, for example. We are offering chillers, so we are really offering the entire infrastructure that is needed to cool a modern data center. And as I said, right now we are paying very much attention to the increasing loads in data centers and how we can do this even more efficiently by providing a um, yeah, more integrated infrastructure uh, to really capture these uh, rising heat loads. Yes, so the, the liquid cooling, is it a viable solution for upgrading a legacy data centers? Oh, absolutely. I'm uh, completely convinced, and I'm talking about liquid cooling since, um, I would say, it's 2016. And liquid cooling is not new, right? If we go back in history, it was used at the very beginning of large mainframe computers. And uh, now it's coming back because it is the more efficient way of cooling these uh, increasing chip uh, capacities. And uh, roughly, you could say it's thousands times better than air cooling. And uh, of course, if we take a look at um, sustainability, if we take a look at legacy data centers, I'm personally convinced that we can may uh, reuse existing data center space by um, deploying liquid uh, cooling in a smart way. Yeah. Do you need to be in a certain location for that? I mean, amateur question, do you need to be near rivers, lakes, uh, seas? No, not at, not, not at all. This has nothing to do with pulling water from a river or a lake. It is uh, bringing the water directly to the chip. For example, one idea of uh, direct li liquid chip level cooling. Or we could talk about immersion, where we uh, dip an entire server into a non-conductive liquid. So the, the liquid cooling technologies improve the deployment of the data center in means of time to the market? I think it can, because we need to then go back and uh, look also into modular structures, right? Um, in the beginning of data centers, everything was stick-built. Then people got the idea of uh, bringing some uh, modular structures in form of containers into the market. But at the end of the day, uh, the densities that you could reach in these buildings were not good enough, at least to my opinion. Whereas if you would look now uh, deploying liquid chip level cooling, for example, or immersion cooling, and uh, build these structures uh, around this type of technology, you can increase the density significantly. And with that, you can say you have uh, completely factory built data centers that you can rel relatively fast deploy, because these are structures that you would actually test completely at your factory. Yeah. Let's talk about sustainability, which is a key topic in your industry. Sustainability. Um, at the end of the day, a 10 megawatt data center is a 10 megawatt data center. But if I apply liquid chip level cooling, I can increase my rack density from today we see, what, 10, 12, 15 kW, maybe to values up to 50 or even 80 or maybe even 100 kW per rack. With that, I could say that I can decrease the space needed to actually build a data center or I can say I can reuse existing buildings. And that falls well into the discussion about um, sustainability, to my opinion. Besides that, the efficiency gain that we can uh, reach with liquid chip level cooling plays into the sustainability role as well. Yeah, so but look in the future, 10 years ahead, what will change? What will change 10 years, oh my god. Uh, that's a loaded question. I think our, the demand for data centers will increase significantly. Um, I call it an arms race to bring data center space online. If we are taking a look, for example, except, uh, uh, in the US, it is unbelievable what these hyperscalers have in mind looking four, five, six years out. What I think is going to happen is that the deployments as they are being planned today maybe revisit it to uh, bring this whole AI discussion into the mix. And therefore, we need to think about increasing densities, 
and we need to think about how we could do this in a smarter way, meaning not wasting um, an entire uh, big data center space to pump a lot of air into it, but reuse it and rethink it to bring uh, liquid chip level cooling into play, which probably is maybe a discussion that will happen also with legacy data centers or data centers as they've been designed today and changed over the course of time, over the next four or five years in order to increase the densities needed. Yeah. Well, preparing for this uh, morning session, uh, I stumbled on this quote of uh, somebody who is very much hated right now, President Putin, who said, <laughs> who said about artificial intelligence um, that the government that uh, controls AI controls the world. We have uh, this mix now of AI data center. Is it, is it true that, I mean, if you are in the front line of controlling AI, I think it's also a, dangerous? It could be dangerous, depending on who controls AI. And uh, if you go back, there was actually a discussion in the US that AI needs to be regulated. But how do you want to regulate AI if you don't know what AI really is? I think we're still at the very beginning of understanding AI. And um, AI, I heard in the, in, in the previous panel, it's kind of you put everything into a bucket and you apply AI and you get out of it what you need very fast. I think AI can be very good if you look into the um, medical side, for example. There is a lot of research that needs to be done. There is a lot of stuff, a lot of data available around the world. And it takes enormous amount of, of um, personnel to really go through this. AI will help. On the other hand, AI is only looking what's available in the internet. And I always say garbage in, garbage out. So we need to find ways to regulate it and to make sure that what we extract from this is correct. So that means you think it will be a safe way to go? I think we can't stop it anymore. It's AI, a AI is there. AI is a discussion that evolved in its um, presence over less than 12 months. At the beginning of last year, we were talking about it on a side note, right? And now it's the number one topic. And so, I think, is also the topic of liquid cooling. I need to go back to what we do sure. for a living. Yeah. Um, the liquid cooling, for my understanding, is um, directly connected to AI. I would say maybe it's, uh, it's kind of entering a marriage. And it soon will become an old couple where one can't live without the other. So that's how I look at liquid cooling along with AI or ML and the other high data need processing yeah. elements that are do, out there. Do you see it, somebody told me this term as a deliciously complicated problem? It is, yes. And it, um, it makes people like me happy because we can take a look at new technologies. We can rethink what we're doing and we can may, um, apply ideas that we thought of a while back, but nobody really wanted to have anything to do with it because it was too costly. Uh, there was also a, um, uh, a mentioning of cost, applying uh, liquid chip level cooling. Yes, it is a little bit more complex, but I think also by looking at the densities you can achieve with it, it's all becoming relative. And I do not believe that the cost is that much more than it is for a typical data center as being built today. Same here, last question. The future looks very rosy, very sunny also for your company. Absolutely, it does. It's a wonderful industry to be in at the moment. And um, from what I'm hearing, I think it will be the case for many years to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.